Hey guys, this is Saptashi here and welcome to our YouTube channel. Today we are going to discuss on P-Stochastic Neighborhood Embedding, p -SNI, which is a very very important dimension reduction technique and uh, we are going to do a hands-on. So we are going to implement it on different data sets and see the results. Okay, uh, so we will use our regular Kaggle Jupyter Notebook environment. Uh, this notebook is a public notebook and will be available for you to do your own experiments. Okay, uh, so we have done a, a theory of this uh, this particular concept in great detail. Okay, but nevertheless, I will try to give you a very quick gist of the basic working of this. All right. So Disney tries to reduce dimension by preserving the neighborhood. Okay, in contrast to PCS focus on preserving variability. All right. So, what do we what do we mean by that? So, let's say you know in your original feature space, you have you have 50 dimension, and for a particular reference point A, let's say the closest neighbors are B, C, D, E, and A. All right. And so, if by some trick I can convert this from this 50 dimension to two dimension, so this neighborhood information will be retained. What, I, what do I mean by that is in this two dimension also, the closest neighbors of A will be B, C, D, E and F. All right. So now let's see how we can represent the points. The points are represented by a probability distribution where the probability uh, are. So I have I have five neighbors. So for that five neighbors, I will have five probabilities which will constitute a probability distribution. And these probabilities will be inversely proportional to the distance of the neighbors from the reference point. Okay, so this just signifies that you know if I have picked this particular reference point, what is the probability of picking a particular neighbor? All right. So you can understand that each point in uh, in the original space as well as the reduced space can be represented by a probability distribution. And of course, you want these two probability distributions to be as similar as possible. Right? How do you measure similarity between two probability distributions? You can measure that by KL divergence. All right? And uh, this process of converting from high dimension vector to low dimension vector is called as embedding. Now, let's look at some of the syntax of this. Okay? So, this is how uh, the syntax looks like. This is from SKLearn. All right, and we are going to look at only some of the parameters. Okay, so one uh, important parameter is component. So how many components you want in the lower dimension? All right, perplexity. So this is also an an interesting uh, uh, parameter. So basically, it kinds of tells you that how many neighbors to uh, consider when you are constructing this probability distribution. So the value is between five and thirty. Uh, 5 and 50 and the default value is 30. So large data sets have relatively large perplexity values or will need relatively large perplexity values. So there is a the concept of learning rate. So the learning rate is same as gradient descent. If you, if you, you know, if you have a very high learning rate, you know, uh, you, you may not get, discover the actual patterns. And if you have a very, very low learning rate, you can get stuck in a local minimum. All right. And there is also an option of initialization. So TSNI is a very, very computationally expensive process, all right? And it depends a lot on how, uh, you know, it is getting initialized, okay? Especially in the lower dimension space. So one of the option is random, okay? Another option is actually you can use PCA to uh, initialize this, okay? And it turns out that PCA often works better than random initialization. Let's start by, you know, doing our uh, importing of libraries and we also vectorize uh, some colors, you know, so that uh, if you are using it for some supervised learning, different class can be colored uh, differently. All right. So let's now uh, use one of the very used uh, data sets called as make circles. So this is available from SKLearn data sets. All right. So we are using 200 samples, adding a little bit of uh, noise and First, we are just going to scatter plot the original data. Okay, so if you look at the data, you know, uh, as the name suggests, two concentric circles are made. Okay, so one is marked by the color red, another is marked by the color blue. All right. 
Okay, now let's uh, use Disney and see that if I, I am, uh, you know, uh, using the Disney components, are the classes well separated, like, you know, in original dimension. Only one thing that is to be noticed over here is that the original dimension is also in two, uh, two dimension space, right? But only thing is that, you know, these are not, uh, these are not uh, linearly separable, okay? You have seen that how k-means and all clustering algorithms doesn't do well for make circle data set, okay? So let's run this uh, and now let's look at what Disney gets. So Disney also somewhat, you know, somewhat uh, reproduces the uh, same kind of classification boundary. Uh, However, the, if you see that the difference between the two classes have little bit reduced, okay. So, let's now uh, do some experiment on perplexity. So, this is also one of the important thing. So, initially, I will start with a perplexity of 5 and then I will use perplexity of 30, 40 and 100, okay. So, uh, the perplexity of 5 should uh, give me more uh, local information, okay. And... Uh, while I move to more number of uh, more number of uh, neighbors, uh, you know, I should get the global patterns. So let us run this and see, you know, how this looks like. Okay. So as I said, uh, you know, with perplexity of five, though the classes are well separated, but uh, there is quite a quite a uh, quite a difference from the original dimension, right? Uh, because it is focused on the local pattern, not so much on the global pattern, right? Perplexity of 30 uh, is not not really great. You see, there is there is a lot of overlap now has happened, right? Perplexity of 40 is well separated, and once we move to perplexity of 100, the separation has increased. Okay, all right. Now let's try uh, PCA and PSNI on MNIST. All right. So you already know about uh, this MNIST data set. So this is a very very a famous data set often touted as the hello world of computer vision. So you have 10 classes of handwritten digits, you know, starting from 0 to 9. And uh, each uh, digit is represented by a 21 into 28 pixel, okay. So which uh, gives you actually 784 features, all right. And uh, basically we are right now using uh, this fetch uh, OpenML function, all right. And uh, we are separating the data and target, okay. And uh, it's it's taking a little bit of time because because the data size is uh, data size is huge, okay. And after that, what we are going to do is we are going to do a trend test split, all right. So uh, the data load has happened. Now let's quickly do a trend test split, okay. So one of the thing if you notice is that we have used a test size of 0.95. So we have used only 5% data in training. So one of the reasons for that is, as I said, that you know, Disney is very, very computationally expensive. Okay. So you know, if I run for this 100% uh, data, it will take you know, quite a lot of time uh, for that. Okay. So even uh, even in this case, it will take a lot of time. And you know, if we if we use different random states, okay. So we will get different results because Disney is quite affected by the initialization. Okay. So let it run in the background and let's see, you know, what we are going to do next. Okay. So simply what we are going to do is we are going to plot them and, and see. So basically, you know, if, if the digits are, uh, you know, uh, digits are close enough, digits are uh, uh, close enough in this lower dimension. So this is a real test, right? So in make circle, we had only two features, okay? And we are we were converting also to two features. Here, what is happening is that you have 784 features and you are going down to two features, okay? So this is quite an audacious task, all right? And you see uh, uh, it is completed now. So let's now run the scattered plot. So we are just plotting the PCA result and Disney result side by side. All right, so, you know, if you look at this result side by side, though I have not used the labels, you can very well understand that where, you know, PCA is very random, okay, maybe only, only, uh, you know, the uh, digits like zero, which is very, very different from others, is well separated, but otherwise, 
all other digits are not at all well separated, very, very mixed. Okay. But when we come to Disney, even we have come from 784 features to two features, it has given you beautiful separation, right? Many of the classes, right? So you can see that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Seven classes are quite well separated, but of course, there will be some overlap between eight and nine, uh, you know, maybe, maybe three and eight. Okay. So those kind of things are possible. All right. So this is the beauty of Disney. Now let's look at another particular uh, example. Okay. Another particular data set, which is called a Swiss roll and which is actually uh, very famous for uh, this uh, uh, demonstrating this manifold learning. Okay. So let's look at how this uh, Swiss roll looks like. So we have just plotted, we have generated the data and we have plotted it. Okay. And uh, it gives you kind of a three dimension feature and uh, and you see that uh, uh, if you just apply Euclidean distance, right? So you can you can understand you, you may feel that points over here and here are close enough, right? Uh, so this is one of the themes of manifold learning. Actually, uh, the curvatures, right? That wherever the curvature is same, you know they have similar color, and that's what the class should be, right? Now let's apply PC and PCN and CC the result on this, okay? So uh, if you look at how we have applied Disney, we have only focused on number of components for both PC and Disney. Okay. So uh, this will also take a little bit of time. Okay. So yeah, now it is done. Now let's plot it and see how PCA and Disney looks like. Okay. All right. So, you know, PC and Disney gives you quite different representation. Why uh, the global shape is retained in PCA, okay? Uh, you see that uh, Disney has been much better in terms of actually flattening it to, you know, two dimension where uh, individual points are very close to each other, right? Uh, individual points which are colored, uh, you know, and, and now if you apply Euclidean distance on it and try some algorithm, probably it will be better than what is happening over here, right? So, you know, these are some of the motivations of applying uh, TISNI, okay? So, uh, we, we gave you a very quick theoretical understanding of uh, TISNI. We told you, uh, you know, what are the important parameters like uh, perplexity and number of components, okay? And finally, we have seen TISNI on mix circles, MNI, IST, and the manifold learning, okay? Thanks a lot, guys, for watching this video. Okay, if you find this helpful, please like, subscribe and comment on our YouTube channel. Thanks so much guys, we'll back with some other interesting videos soon.